So I'm digital reporter um, Isabel Finch and I'm here with Lauren Shigovin who um, is doing a tour with us today um, at Grand Farm Show. So can you uh, start by telling us a little bit about what you're here today? So, um, well, I love coming to the Farm to Show um, every year, and uh, obviously it's great to see CD last year, so uh, back again. Um, I'm going to be at the Women in Farmers Tour later on today in the Kino Theatre. So, it'll be great to really explore the issues which um, are a barrier to women being leaders in pharmacy, really. And um, I think one of the things that's always interesting is that there's so many women working in pharmacy, but very few women at the you know, top of in those top leadership roles. Um, as a member of the um, RPS, English Pharmacy Board, we've got a very kind of balanced board. And um, so that's something that I think I'm sort of encouraging all the women to get involved in pharmacy politics and also leadership because I think it's really important that we're representing. Yeah. So what would you say is the biggest barrier for women um, on reaching the top, top levels of in pharmacy? I think for some people it can be uh, an issue of confidence, um, it, about just putting your name, putting yourself out there and accepting that it's not going to be, you might get rejected for 9 out of 10 roles or 9 out of 10 opportunities, but it's that 10th one which is everything that means so much to you. Just got to keep uh, trying really. Um, and you know, I think we are also a profession that's really open to women. I think we are, we are a female friendly profession. Um, that's why people choose pharmacy because of the flexible work available for the different um, areas of practice. So let's celebrate that. So um, you've been you're, you've been on the board of the RPS now for three months. Yeah. How is that all going? I think I've been I've really enjoyed um, meeting the new board members and obviously it's um, working in, with a board like that takes time and um, I think we're really positive going forward and I think there's a lot to be done but I'm positive that this board can really set out to do what it, what it wants to do which is make sure we're promoting pharmacy to me, that's an aspect that I've been really um, key on and to add to that, so recently with our board meetings we've been having videos straight after and we're then enabling people who watch on social media to actually see directly what we're doing which I think is really um, important to be directly to them. So you've had quite a big meeting this week? Yeah. yeah, so this week actually, so um, it was Wednesday, Thursday, we had our meetings, um, board meetings on Thursday. I think probably one of the most important things for me that came out of that meeting was uh, our involvement with the Hospital Expert Advisory Group, which has been set up specific by the RPS to make sure that we have a direct link to hospital pharmacy. You know, I'm a community pharmacist myself, but that, on that board I need to be understanding the issues that are affecting other sectors. So we've decided that we're going to have a board member from the DPB go to the hospital expert advisory group and vice versa. So we get that true connect. Um, one of the more interesting things also that we uh, talked about was a report which was done on GP pharmacists. And while some community pharmacists might be under the illusion that it's just if the community go to GP, there's also hospital pharmacists going into GP practices. In fact, GP pharmacists going back into community, back into hospital. So I think, you know, I, my eyes were really opened up uh, to a portfolio career uh, of a pharmacist. So um, brilliant, really. I think it's been a good week. Thanks so much for uh, the to you today. No, I hope you're all very well. Thank you, look forward to seeing you later. Okay. Thank you.